Hey, it really is Wednesday, January 13th now. I had mislabeled uh, yesterday's video for a minute. Make too many videos. Don't even, even, don't even know what day it is. <clears throat> it's early in the morning. I'm just waking up having my very first cup of coffee. <sighs> Folks, I'm glad you're with me. Um... I checked my uh, comment section, you know, and I was really pleased today that I didn't have to do a whole lot of cleaning like I usually do when I get up the next day and I see, you know, a bunch of, not a bunch, but I see knucklehead or uh, troll type uh, comments to be cleaned out. I didn't have to do that this morning. It was nice. Doesn't mean it won't happen again, but it was just nice for a change. I do want to uh, reassure, resend the message that I suffer no fools, and I know what I'm about, so um, um, I'm just going to keep on keeping on and um, not being deterred by um, people that are beneath me, yeah, I'll put it just like that, okay? I'm always trying to be diplomatic, but let me just get real about it. Some of you dumb fucks need to just stay the holy fuck away. Really messing shit up. Okay, so you want to hear about some music? Well, I'll tell you what I've been playing, because I ain't been playing much. I've been glued to the computer, to the world, you know, this madness. Can't get rid, can't get rid of that motherfucker Trump quick soon enough. So I pulled this, I hadn't played this in a long time, and I used to have an original. I had a second wave um, edition of Joy Division's Ideal for Living on the anonymous label, and I sold it way too soon, you know, because now it goes for over a thousand. I may be, I don't remember what I got for it, but I sold it way too soon. I still like this music, um, and... Um, it's just a, it's just hard to say why. I just, I feel it. Joy Division inspired me to start a, my own band. They were the band. Specifically, it was Joy Division. At the top of the list, that got me to start the band Digital Sex. The Young Gods, I think they're from Switzerland. These guys are brilliant. Really poetic like jazz too their words to me are like impressionism um they don't mean anything but or if, if they mean something it's definitely not clear but the way that uh franz speaks and sings it's kind of profound to me i love that cover too i think this album is very powerful this is their latest it came out in 2019 data mirage tangram incredible a little more on topic, put this on yesterday, thinking about um, the whole mess in the world, Parliament's Chocolate City, you know, I'm all for a chocolate city right now, you know, um, get George Clinton and some of those folks up there. Now, I know on a smart, on a realistic tip that, you know, these musicians aren't qualified politically, but compared to what politicians are doing to the world, in many ways, I'd rather have artists running the world. Artists and and women. I know that women can be just as shitty as men, can even be harsher. <clears throat> but I also know that the nurturing aspect, because of giving life, giving life, that's strong in women. Give it to the women. I'm ready. Isotope 217, that's Jeff Parker, who was in Tortoise, is one of his bands. And this is a 12-inch remix uh, by Commander Mindfucking Designer. Way cool. Two, two long tracks, jazzy, spacey, funky, all three. Really good. This is not an original, but this is a now collectible album, The Grotic Whipper Jenny, by a white band that played a mixture of psychedelic rock and funk. 
and it came out on the People label, James Brown's label. The connection is that the cat behind the, the this, the white guy on here, I believe his name is Dave Matthews, worked for James Brown. I believe he was, I believe he was James Brown's music director, and so that was the connection. This is very good. It's a little inconsistent, but the songs that are slightly cringeworthy, it's kind of like, hmm, this is a, a black-white or white-black take on Hippie. You folks that don't like me always bringing up race, you know, I'm not playing a race card. I'm talking about reality. Get used to it. I also received from Matt uh, with um, Jazz in Britain yesterday one of their new releases. Group Sounds 4 and 5, Black and White Raga. I can't review this today, Matt, because um, I read the notes and I gave it a cursory, cursory first listen. And I'm going to need to be ready to listen to this. I can hear... What they're saying is that this is a testimony to the, um, in many ways, unrecognized greatness of English jazz musicians, especially in light of how young these cats were when this was made. Jack Bruce, Lynn Dobson, John Heisman, Henry Lowther, and the like. Um, what, what little I listen to, see, I will come back to this, Matt. I know you watch, but I'll tell you this much. I could, you know, the first thing you hear is that these guys are not pretending to play jazz, okay? You put it on, and it's a jazz group playing. The other thing I do, I notice is that this is most likely an archive recording, maybe someone in the band or someone at the venue just put a tape recorder, turned it on, and captured it, because the fidelity, it's, I think it's mono, and the fidelity is just okay. The one thing I want to say, though, Matt, is that what you're doing by uh, releasing these archived, this archived material, I think it's very important and um, and uh, very valuable. You know, this history of jazz in Britain. I think you're doing a wonderful thing here, and thank you for um, extending it to. I mean, because I know it's not cheap to send the stuff here, but yeah, I can help you get the word out. But thank you for for having me in the loop. I'm doing fine, people. My stress management skills work, and my my view of the world works. Okay, I'm not over here freaking out. I'm not over here. I've had, last night was the first time I had my sleep pattern um, disrupted that much because of January 6th. And as time has been going on, folks, the gravity and the seriousness of what happened is just continuing to grow as people are really starting to see just how messed up what happened and the level of danger that we're at because we're, we're still dealing with this internal threat of crazed right-wingers. They're not even all white. Crazed the enemy within it's just become it becomes more and more apparent each day just what we're dealing with and just how nuts it is and the fact that we have that psychotic psychopathic racist fuck of a president who is reveling in his ugly ugly power won't call his goons off probably and 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 everyone's saying it you know he, he didn't have any power really in the first place. He tricked these people, now they're in cult mind. If he were to, if he were to come to his senses and try to say, hey folks, okay, we gotta, we gotta do the right thing, these people are already gone. Oh, now they got to him. You know, and that's what people are saying is that the, the right wing crazies, and I'm gonna call them that, are so far gone that any attempt to make sense out of this they're just psychotically going to spin it and keep heading over the cliff, taking us with them.